My first view in Serra Letivara in Medellin, looking over the city. Here with my friend Guerra, who is a tour guide uh, for Medellin, a historian who is uh, Guerra's friend, Santiago. Uh, we're going to downtown and we have the chance to see some of the traditional architecture, some of the traditional culture of the city. Uh, not only the Cieteros and other things from Peria Flores, but also different perspectives and how this tram changed all the area with different graffitis, with different artistic innovations in the facade of the houses and different kind of things. So it's going to be a pretty good day. Yeah. Where where are we going? So right now we are in the metro cable. We're going to commute eight to a neighborhood called El Pinal. We're gonna visit my grandma. And you're gonna see a lot of nice terraces in there, and yes, you're gonna see one of the normal, more original neighborhoods in the commute. And you're gonna see that it's way safer than what it looks. We made it to Guerra's grandmother's house. Guerra's grandmother was super nice, super funny. Um, we had some coffee with her. We went up on the rooftop and we checked out. She has a nice little terrace with a with an awesome view. Um, you would you would first thought any, anybody from I don't know any in, from America or from Europe or whatever would think oh this this neighborhood's so dangerous and you know I'm sure they do have their problems here and there but generally you know I mean it's not a place I would go by myself at night. But, I mean, it's just, just normal people hanging out, you know, living their life. And uh, we had a good time. It was, it was really cool to see the outside community. Uh, basically, Jero was telling us that uh, a lot of the more wealthy people are in the bottom of the valley in Medellin. And throughout history, as people have come to the city from, from outside the mountains and stuff, they've all settled up along the mountains. So actually, the more poor communities are higher up the mountain. So if you're in the center of Medellin, you look up the mountain... Um, you can see that it's just kind of a mixture of, and everybody kind of built the houses themselves, and so there's no there's no real like organization to the structure. All the roads are kind of crazy. It's actually really a great thing they built the uh, cable car because now they can get up instead of taking a bus that just zigzags up and down the mount up up and down the mountain. Uh, you can just take the cable car and go up. You see some part of the, the culture that's shared the same food in some areas. The audio was a little bad in my with my conversation with Santiago, but I learned a couple really fascinating things. Um, as a musician, I'm always interested in the history of music and and how different rhythms came about, um, specifically how indigenous people and slaves, colonialism, Spanish, how they all kind of contributed to music culture. Uh, and in this case, in, in Colombia's case, it's very interesting because uh, a lot of the slave trade did happen in the north part of the country, in Cartagena and Barranquilla, but there's two rivers that run down to the south part of the country, in, like near Ecuador and Peru, and uh, he was telling me that, that a lot of the slaves were actually brought down through the rivers into the south part of the country. So a lot of the um, Afro-Colombian uh, culture is in the south part of the country, which is very fascinating. There are some towns along the river that we actually plan to explore that are some of the originating towns of cumbia music. And uh, apparently, there are different versions, but they are both called cumbia. Um, very, very fascinating. Uh, I learned a lot with my conversation with Santiago. The music culture in Medellin is uh, is kind of interesting. It seems that there's a lot of fans of American rock music. So there's actually a few bars that I've seen that um, it's, the theme is like rock music. <laughs> Um, for the for the most part, like the discos, the the nightclub scene, of course, is like reggaeton, is like hip hop, rap. Um, the live music is 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 probably a mixture of like some maybe some reggaeton DJ type stuff, and then also uh, it's like salsa bands, uh, mariachi bands. Um, but other than that, we did see actually did see a, a school band perform. Kind of got lucky. We were hanging out, having some cappuccinos, and then somebody was like, "Hey, there's a." 
a little school band playing, or not just a school band, but like music students from a music university were playing actually a mixture of different uh, Latin styles. We actually heard some uh, Cuban music. Uh, we heard some rumba and some different aspects of song, and then they also played some of their uh, some Colombian music. Uh, but everything seems to be a mix. Everything seems to be like a fusion, um, and that seems to be true for the whole world. Uh, even in Cuba, for example, they they're mixing things together. So, be interesting to see where music goes in 10 years from now.